Greetings everybody. Today I want to share the game from round 8 of the Isle of Man tournament. This game is from um, Alexei Shirov with the white pieces. Mr. Fire on board himself versus uh, GM Harika with the black pieces. And this game was a bomb burner. So I hope you enjoy it. Here we go. So the game started out E4 from Shirov, E6 from uh, Harika, French defense. D4, classical response, D5. And now already at move two, white is forced to make a decision of what to do about this E pawn. There's several ways just to give you newbies, uh, you know, a brief, you know, look at this defense for black there's several ways to deal with the threat uh, to this e pawn one is to simply advance it but you lose time because you could be doing something more productive with that move All right you play e5 and you lose time you're not moving any pieces then say black would continue like that you know, that's just a real quick uh, demonstration. Another way you can deal with the threat to this pawn is a simply exchange. That's known as the exchange variation. And notice too that this bishop is blocked right here. And when you exchange this pawn, solves that problem for black immediately. <clears throat> that's one of the uh, lesser played variations in the French. And of course, there's gambit continuations and such, and we won't even discuss those. But those are two main lines. And another one of the main tabias in the French is this move, knight d2, known as the terrace. The purpose of this move is that it defends the center, and um, then black can just give up his center, and he had the knight there. You say, well, why is the knight on d2? The idea is to nullify this move, bishop to b4. So knight d2, bishop b4, trying to exert a pin. White would simply swat it away like a fly from playing a move like c3. Get out of here. And of course, Knight d2 is one of the main, main tabbies of the French defense. Yeah, many great players have picked, have taken this line. Uh, Karpov, uh, Michael Adams, for instance, played this line for many years. It's knight d2. So I would say that knight d2, along with the line that Shirov played, knight c3, are the most popular lines dealing with the French defense. Knight c3 is what you would call that classical response. Just developing the piece, dealing with the threat. And of course, if d takes e4, which is entirely possible, then the knight uh, does what it was intended to do. It simply defends the center. Of course, there are many, there's many moves here by black also. I won't get into all of those, but uh, bishop b4 pins the knight and reinstates the threat here so now e5 is almost forced I mean there are some some like different continuations again you can exchange here there's gambit lines but the most reliable and um, usual move you'll see here is e5 black continues his assault on the center because this uh, will be an advantage for white if black is not able to destroy this center so he attacks it vigorously a3 this move uh, bishop takes c3 doesn't have to be played there's another line called the McCutcheon variation where the bishop goes back but that's theory that you will have to look up because this gets very very complicated 
And I just want to want to stick with the game here. So bishop takes c3, check is played. B takes c3. So what has happened? Black has given up his dark square bishop. That is very valuable in this position. And thus the bishop here. And in compens as for compensation, he has fractured white's pawn structure on the queen side. <clears throat> and with these weaknesses over here on this side of the board, the queen side, namely, black's counterplay usually will come over here on this side of the board and attacking these weak pawns. Meanwhile, white having the space on the king side due to his advanced e pawn will usually focus his attack on this side of the board and you get a dynamic and unbalanced uh, game here note that since black has parted with the dark square bishop the dark squares are something that black has to keep his eye on dark squares become very very important it's white is the only one with a dark square bishop this bishop can often dominate the position single-handedly. Black also has to be aware of potential outpost opportunities on these squares. For instance, white would love to have his knight on e6 and even on c5. So knight e7 and this is one of the effects of having a pawn on e5 is the knight cannot dis develop the natural square and if he goes here then black risk having this piece captured having this pawn uh, structure shattered so going back to the uh, idea I uh, spoken about earlier of white losing time advancing this pawn usually it's a wash because black usually has to you know move pieces uh, you know several times in order to get them to ideal positions so it's kinda like black gains time but then gives the time back so for instance normally the knight would just be able to pop out to f6 but the knight has to go to e7 and then to get into the game it has to go to f5 or sometimes it goes here so moving the pieces around several times in order to get them to decent positions usually compensates for white's um, perceived loss of time by pushing e5 okay so knight f3 natural looking move and again the general concept and plan is white usually will attack on the king side and black usually will seek his counterplay on the queen side but let's see how this game develops notice also another feature of this game is this open file yeah, it's very important. It's the only open file. Queen a5. So we see threat to this pawn, and uh, black is basically following his idea. Attack the weaknesses. Bishop d2. And we have that alignment with the queen. Of course, black does not appreciate that. Knight bc6, putting pressure on the d4 square. And um, sometimes this knight will go here, putting additional pressure on d4, along with this pawn. So down this queen will be here, putting additional pressure here. In this position is kind of difficult because, you know, the rook would just come to b1. So the queen will stay on a5 to keep the eye on these pawns. Let's get rid of some graphics. And also, sometimes, um, depending on what black's plan is as far as tearing down this um, pawn structure, sometimes a knight will be on g6. So make put this knight here. Sometimes this knight will go to g6. And in combination with this knight, they will both press the e5 square and then play f6 and that's another way that black will attack and then sometimes this queen will be on c7 
a4. Gaining space on the queen side. And sometimes uh, white will maneuver this bishop to c1 and then a3. Remember what I said about the dark squares earlier. Black has no dark square bishop. So white's bishop can dominate the position. And right now you see black. Excuse me. White, white's dark square bishop is blocked in by his pawns. And would like to get in, into the game. Note also, because some like, you know, um, newer type players would be, you know, tempted into, um, you know, playing a move, uh, excuse me, playing a move like C4, you know, with this discovered attack on the queen. And um, it's really kind of like a dubious move because it actually facilitates the destruction of the center, of white center, that is. Because after C4, the queen simply just comes back here. And there's like the pressure here, and now d4 has been weakened. And then say, um, you know, the game could go like that. C takes d5, and e takes d5, and then this pawn is going to be traded off, and then there's going to be a lot of pressure here. And say, for instance, c3, bishop g4, and the pressure just con continues to escalate. You know, on these um, on these central pawns here, and eventually this is going to get traded off. So, c4 is something that would not be, uh, you know, the best move strategically, even though it's like uh, gives white a one move threat. All right, so a4 was played. Bishop d7, where else to put the bishop just uh, basically developing? There's, uh, you know, some ideas here where you could try to play like b6 and then play, you know, bishop a6 and stuff like that. And then perhaps in this position, maybe c4, I think c4 would probably work here since white, excuse me, since black has continued, has weakened its queen side a little bit more. Okay, so bishop d7 was played. Bishop b5 is an interesting move. Bishop e2 is like a usual move, but bishop b5 um, doesn't really do anything per se. And I guess uh, Shirov is trying to provoke some weakness out of black on the queen side in the form of a6. But I like the move of just, bishop, you know, simple bishop e2. Just like that and get castled so a6 is played and then bishop d3 and of course this is where white really wants to be but we know he can't stay there because of c4 and c4 is played so bishop e2 so what has Shirov done with the white pieces here is that um, he's provoked some minor weaknesses in the black position remember that I was saying that um, blacks counterplay in this position usually comes on the queen side and one one general rule to remember when you're um, say you're castled on opposite flanks of the board like you're castled on say you're white and you're castled queen side and the opponent's castled um, you're castled king side and your opponent's castled on the queen side one thing to remember is that when uh, excuse me not cap not necessarily castle when you're playing on one side of the board and up and your opponent is playing on the other right not necessarily castle it's important to keep your pawns structure your pawns flexible in other words if you allow your your uh, pawns to become immobile and uh where they can't move, they can't attack on the side of the board, you lose that flexibility. Usually, you end up in trouble on that side of the board because you have no counterplay. So what's happened here is, if you notice, it's hard for, after C4 has been played by Black, it's kind of hard for Black to really orchestrate the, the um, that queen side counterplay. 
Like, for instance, he could try B5, like a move like B5, but it would, it would be a blunder. So, like, for instance, if you try that, and you have, like, A takes B5, and then Queen takes B5 is forced. Then you have Black taking over the file. And that's better. It was better for White. So what has happened, even though it seems like Black has gained some space, he's played C4, it's kind of like, okay, we're, it's, it's one of those situations, okay, now what? You know? And honestly, the only thing I can really think of is a move like, you know, moving this knight out the way. Like, say back here, which see, which to me is anti-intuitive, just to have this uh, double attack on this pawn. Which is dangerous because, you know, the pawn will be right in front of the, the queen. You know, that's like a real dangerous move. So, um, so it, it, here it seems like white, uh, black, you know, counterplay on the queen side is kind of kind of halted and if you play on your side of the board it's halted that means Shirov in this case can concentrate fully on the other side of the board like he doesn't have to defend anything he can just go all out for a king side uh, expansion so the key is when you're when you're attacking on opposite side of the board don't lose your your um, your flexibility let's watch what happened next so h6 so now we see some um, preparatory measures on the king side. Black knows what's coming, so he tries to, uh, you know, basically prepare for the storm. Castle, and now Black makes a critical decision here. He castles on the queen side. So now we see his true intentions are. To attack white on the king side now now this move is very very risky and like I said uh, earlier he's kind of lost his mojo on the queen side so he decides hey my best chance is uh, to attack on the king side so if he just for instance castled um, on the king side himself then white would just basically build up his attack on the king side and probably blow um, black you know out of the water so black realizes hey my queen side counterplay is kind of stagnant so he castles over there the problem is is we have some ready-made um, attacking possibilities already for instance this open file is deadly whereas black has to still open open up a file so let's see how it continued bishop c1 why bishop c1 remember what I said earlier look at the dark squares there's no no uh, guardian of the dark squares here notice also unprotected now this is a uh, and this is true to Shirov's style right here. This pawn can actually be captured by Black. I mean, it looks risky. After when I first saw it, I thought the queen was trapped. But um, after Bishop D two, Queen B two is possible. Then Rook B one, then Queen A three, and if White if uh, if Black wants excuse me if White wants he could draw by you know repeating the position. Of course, Shirov wouldn't do that. That, that wouldn't be his idea. But um, the idea would be to sacrifice his pawn to open up lines. So say after rook a b1. He might just probably sacrifice this pawn also. Or play c3 or something to that effect. But that pawn uh, could have been captured. But um, it looks very dangerous to capture that pawn. So Shirov leaves it. And King B8. Bishop A3. Bishop is very powerful. No count, no counterpart or anything. 
again notice he leaves this pawn <laughs> again it can't be captured because of sim simple uh, uh, capture here or even just a discover <laughs> discover check then picking up the queen knight c8 trying to guard some of the property dark, remember the dark squares are super weak around the king and queen d2 not not so much really to protect this pawn uh zero was ready to give it up earlier but what he does here is he unites the rooks he unites the rooks and gets the queen involved in the game the queen is going to be able to if it needs to transfer over to the uh, king side and the rooks are connected king goes into the corner knight h4 what's the reason behind knight h4 is black wants to play f4 and f5 rook dg8 black wants to counter attack on the king side G3. Now here's some here's a very instructional uh, moment right here, the critical moment in the game. Remember, I was talking about when you're attacking on the you know different sides of the board or whatever. You want your attack to remain flexible. Now watch what Shirov does with the white pieces to make Black's attack inflexible, and neutralize the attack. So first he plays G3. The idea of G3 is is after g5 just to be able to tuck the knight back in here and remember i told you that the idea is to play f4 so even if this pawn is exchanged the knight will come back gloriously to f4 now watch so knight b8 is played and there's like some kind of dubious attack here and again shira just ignores that because all the lines will be opened on the queen side uh, Shira would give this point, take this point off the board if it were legal right now. He would just say, Here, take that, you know. So, this f4, I did is f5, g6 to stop, to stop f5. Now, do you really think g6 is the move that Black wants to do? Of course, he doesn't want to do that. Remember. His attack needs to, needs to be flexible. He needs to be able to he needs to be able to move these pawns and open up the and open up the position for for the rooks. He doesn't want to do g6. Here's the problem though. If he does g5 right now, Shirov has already seen far ahead. Knight g2 comes and then when he tries to open it, then the knight comes out victoriously. Then where's the attack? Because this is guarded. And once again, it's white who has the upper hand who holds the cards. So you had all this weakness appearing on the board now. You have a weak pawn here on h6. f7 is weak. e6 is attacked by the knight. And there's no there's no prospects for attacking for, for black. So he didn't want to do that. But, so now he plays g6. But now, it's like. Where's the attack? So Shirov shuts that down because Shirov is going to switch his. It's, it's already sw switched his attack to the queen side. There's knight g2. And now, if. Same thing. Now with g5. Just as you know, show you. That would be a blunder because of this. So, this F takes, H takes, and that's a wrap. This Rook takes, Rook takes F7. So, this whole concept right here is just totally uh, neutralized. So, Bishop C6, so it gets on defensive, defensive duty. Knight E3.
knight d7 bishop moves to f3 see I like I like straightforward moves like that <laughs> bishop b4 <laughs> all right a bishop f3 he moves the queen to c7 and just just offering the pawn again and taking space from the knights just kill just that's it's just killer moves notice how white white has things to do in the position where well, it's hard for black to to do anything another move is just rook fb1 because th this is where this is where it's happening at on the on the queen side so it's interesting how the plans have switched like in the in the beginning of the game white was going planning on attacking on the king side and white was going to attack excuse me white was going to attack on the king side and black was going to attack on the queen side and then they like switch roles like hey man you attack on the king side you know and i'll attack on the queen side <laughs> so plans have totally switched and it's very very interesting so queen c7 a5 just 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 you know just putting a stamp of ownership on the position just killing these knights man these poor because you know i don't i'm not you know i'm against animal cruelty you know it's just bad what's happening to these horses right here though you know they you know just not being treated right so a5 h5 again this is this is all uh smoke and mirrors because after h4 guess what's going to happen you know what's going to happen g4 the position will remain closed these guys will remain unemployed and that's the thing that's you remember that when you're in the opposite that's the main theme of this game when you're in the opposite you know attacking on opposite wings if you if you shut down the opponents you know you know attack on the other wing then you can just you know you take those measures just to shut his attack down and you can just do what you want make sure you always remain flexible that you all you always got moves you know if you're trying to open up the position make sure that you can open up the position see here black can never really open up the position on the king side except to his detriment he can that so he can never really open up the position so therefore this all this show with the rooks on the G and H file is that's all it is. It's just it's like um you know a magic show. You know, it's not real. It's like Chris Angel, you know, one of them dudes, you know, the um magicians. So H five He goes to B four with the bishop. You know, he just solidifies that. So bishop b4 rook d8 so black is depressed now he's you know it's like what do you do he, he realizes the situation he goes rook d8 queen g2 and now black has to be careful because Cheryl likes to sacrifice he'll play knight c4 in a minute and you got everything you know you got everything lined up of course the natural, natural the natural move to me is just rook uh the natural move to me is rook b1 all day it's just crying out because this rook this rook is not really doing nothing there but queen g2 knight b8 Again, where's that where's that knight going? And okay, the knight moved out of the way for you know the rook, but the rook has no prospects. There it is, finally, rook F B one. And notice White still has things to do in the position. He can he can improve, he can build his position where all black can do is wait. And just shuffle the pieces around in, in the back. This is what you do not want if you're on the black side of the French defense. So there's h4. So there's the glimmer of hope, right? We're going to open this position. We're going to line up rooks on the h file. We're going to go get them. 
right? No, that's not happening. Because now, you know, it's <laughs> position still closed. It just shut down. F6. The rook just comes back. Like, okay, th he's, the rook comes back like, uh, this file is going to be open. Okay, I'm, I'm there. I'm ready, I'm ready to uh, challenge on that file. Again, just des desperate, trying to get, trying to get open lines. F five, devastating, devastating move. Cause now what? F takes E five. F takes E six by Shirov. Just this powerful move so now you got this pawn lingering loitering in the background ready ready to be pushed with the support of the bishop right now if e takes if e takes f5 shirov would do the same thing Just push the pawn e6 same thing um what else what other choices did black have here so f5 f takes e5 this move could even been played d takes e5 but shira played the most incisive move right here f takes e6 so e4 now, what would you play in this position? Of course, Mr. Fire on board, Shirov. <laughs> Bishop takes e4, and it's all based on <laughs> this. is brilliant. It's all based on this pawn right here. This means he saw he had to see this probably at least by at move 29 or 30. So he's giving up a piece, but it's only temporary. This is all based on the, the cramped nature of the position in this past e pawn. Watch out. So bishop takes e4, right? Okay, he just th throws this move in there, h3. Okay, so now the queen comes to e2 and d takes e4. Anticipating that, he moved the queen here so he has this double attack on this pawn. Now, And let me give you the other reason too. Reason why he moves here, besides besides the um, the double attack on this pawn after the capture, he doesn't move the f2 because he wants to keep this rook free to go to f7, which is important in the combination. So watch. So queen e2, d takes e4, rook f7. Now, you tell me where the, where the queen is gonna go. So take a second and just look at it real quick. Where's the queen going? And this is how white gets his piece back. That's forced. He doubles up. Notice the sw Notice how much white can do in the position. He he starts on he starts attacking on the king side. He switches to the queen side, and now you see the attack. He comes back to the king side. So after black his um. Use all that effort and time trying to open up the king side to create chances for his own pieces. It's actually white that winds up benefiting from the opening of lines on the king side at the end of the day. So rook af1. Rook he8. Attacking this pawn. Queen takes c4. Protecting the pawn. Maintaining the threat in the pin, and another little mini lesson out of this is notice how Shirov milks the the uh, situation. He doesn't quickly just take the knight on d7 with the pawn. He doesn't snatch it off the board. He waits. He just keeps doing other things. You know what do I mean by that? He keeps doing other things, right? Here's move 33. So I move 34. White could take right. He, he takes d7. 
He do, he doesn't do that. Why? Because there's nothing white can do. So he just and he he builds up the position even more. That's nice not going anywhere. Rook H E eight. Still he could snatch the knight, right? Does something else. He just keeps pushing and pushing and pushing and getting the most he can out of out of the position. Now what's interesting to me is this move is also available here. So Sheriff had to see this move when he played Queen um Queen takes C four. So if knight E five, right, looks like a little slick tactic here. Simply rook takes C seven, knight takes C four. Knight takes c4. And let's say rook takes e6. Yeah, move like knight e5, and then black is just totally and utterly lost in the position. So going back to the game. So knight d6 is played. Bishop takes d6. Queen takes d6, and now it's time to cash in. E takes D7. So we see White has gotten his piece back. But he's gained a winning position. Rook takes D7. Rook 7, F6. Just again, just, you know, just showing who owns the position. And notice how beautifully this knight is placed in the blockade. And if you haven't read Nemzovich's book, Blockade. That's that's like a real good read, you know. I'm not gonna exaggerate. But, oh, it's the best book and all, you know. Some people, some people, you know, different strokes for different folks. Some books work better for other people, but for me, that book Blockade by Nemzovich, and I'm not talking about my system. I'm talking about Blockade. It's funny because I never even read my system. I'm not saying it's a bad book or whatever. I just never never read it. I should read it though, but um, I have read Blockade many times probably about eight times like i always go i go over it you know just keep going back to it and you know i have it all highlighted and everything it's a little pamphlet it's called blockade but this night man whew, this night is rough these are the best blockading pieces this night right here in front of this pawn stands well in the center you know just has all this influence and notice this bishop never really gets into the game the whole time. This is one of the problems. I forgot to mention that at the beginning of the game. Is that that's one of the main main uh, strategical points in the French. Is that, that bishop on c8 at the beginning is usually, you know, usually a problem. And, uh, you know, many lines in the French revolve around just solving that problem. It's how to get that bishop into the game effectively. And uh, we see in this position, this knight is definitely uh, more valuable than the bishop. Okay, so queen c7 is played. Now, I think here, I think here, right, and, and it's an interesting move, but I just want to point it out because... Right here, you know, after rook d7 by black, right, you have this idea here. You know, it exists on the board. This white's move right now, so you have this idea, right? But, Sirov plays this move, right? So he kind of attacks the queen and eliminates, you know, that idea. But, however, queen a3, right? with this attack here on the back rank notice you have all of this going on it's very interesting to me so for instance at the rook takes d7 check knight f1 bishop d7 of course this is threatened also queen b3 and queen d1 and then you got this all this idea with attack you know attacking this queen uh the king 
and creating some type of perpetual. Now, at this point, this move can be played creating a perpetual. I'll just show you that real quick. For instance, rook takes a6 check, b takes a6, and then you have queen d5, king b8, here, here, and this is, you know, I had to analyze this earlier in the game or end in the draw. They, of course, sure I wouldn't want that. But um, I think <clears throat> for black to have a chance, I think black's best move is black actually missed this move, queen a3. And this move's 38, so who knows what <clears throat> the time situation was. I think black had about 15 minutes here. But he missed this idea of counterattacking because if you look at the weakness in the white position at this point, it's it's his king. This you know his king is a little drafty here. You know all his all of his pieces are like away from the king, and invading white's position. But black's king is actually safer than white's king right now, and that would have been interesting. This invasion of the position. He may he may have thought after queen a3 that perhaps he didn't really you know have a good chance to do anything. So for instance, king f2. But still, queen c1, you know. Maybe he try to come here. So, let me go on record as stating that queen a3 is black's best chance here. So, therefore, if queen a3 gives black such a good chance, that means that white must have made an error here. So, I'm going to say that Shirov's mistake, Shirov's mistake was playing this rook to f7 to f6 rather and what he that in other words this move may have been better it's not may have been it's definitely better is to play that if he's going to attack the queen is use that rook that eliminates that whole this whole concept so therefore if he did if he did it now then just simply rook takes c6 See, that eliminates the whole, you know, the whole idea of queen a3. However, now queen a3 is possible. And if, you know, just to give you an example, if rook takes, then you have rook takes f7. Queen takes f7. And rook f8. And queen c4. And this would just end in perpetual check. I'm not going to go through the whole line, but it will end in a perpetual. This, my friends, is why GM Herrica played queen c7. He either didn't see or underestimated the power of queen a3 and was worried about rook takes c6. So therefore, he played queen c7, which basically still leaves Shirov in the driver's seat. And Shirov played rook takes d7, of course. Bishop take d7 is not possible. And after queen d7, he simply played the move queen to c5. Queen c8 is played. And basically the queen is tied down to the defense of this. c4 is played. Queen b8. And at this point, White is just winning. For instance, he could have played queen takes g5. Rook g8. d5. The bishop finally gets out, but it's too late. Bishop a4. Now the rook goes to the 7th rank, further dominating the position. Rook c8. Queen b6. And again, note that there's several moves that can win. But... Shirov is just wrapping up in what he feels is the most efficient manner. Rook c7. Queen f3. 
D5 note that the knight is protected excuse me D6 bishop takes C6 D7 rook F8 queen C5 with the simple threat of queen takes uh, F8 followed by rook C8 check therefore the sacrifice is made of the bishop which is a less valuable piece in most circumstances than the rook and you say hey wait a minute why didn't he capture that because knight d5 is stronger just simply threatening the check which will not really be dealt with properly so for instance if rook c8 planning the sacrifice <laughs> the rook <laughs> simply knight takes f6 so anyway that was a very um, entertaining and enjoyable game by Shirov a lot of lot of nuances in there a lot of things to be learned and what's interesting is black after all of that brilliant play by Shirov black still had a resource at the end that shows you um, that shows you shows you the resiliency inherent in the French defense itself is very tough nut to crack very very difficult to play against you know I think uh, especially a good a good French defense player um, unfortunately at this point uh, the French defense is not really you know in style with the very very top elite players even though they play it like once in a while like there was a time when you had players like at the top level that normally would play the French like uh, Victor Korsnoy even Morozevich for a while um, you know that would you you get to see it at the top levels but um, even you know guys playing that are 2500 2600 playing the French you can see that is a tough nut to crack uh, but Shirov did a good job even though he allowed that resource at the end and like I said that's something you can analyze on your own um, you know with that Queen A3 but um, like my hats, uh, hats definitely goes off to Shirov. This was like a wonderfully played game, and I enjoyed annotating it. And I hope you did too. Uh, enjoyed, you know, enjoyed listening. So, like I always say, please like and subscribe, and um, I'll see you on the next uh, video.